You may not think that November is really a good time to spray for weeds, but Angela, it, it actually is. Yeah, so in our wheat uh, crop now is a good time to be getting out there and spraying for grassy weeds and fall is actually the best time to make those applications so that you can get good control of those before we go through the winter. They're much more difficult to, co to control once we get into the spring season. Let's talk about some of the, 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 the varieties of weeds that we've maybe seen this time of year. So for grasses and wheat, um, which are our challenge this time of year, we're going to be looking for Italian ryegrass, uh, downy brome, and wild oat. And we're going to take a look at each one of those today. But you may also be concerned about other brome species like cheat and Japanese brome, jointed goat grass, cereal ryegrass, and even volunteer wheat, which we'll also talk a little about today. Okay, let's talk about the first three. Let's walk through some of the characteristics of those of those plants. So for the Italian ryegrass, which is very common here in the central part of Oklahoma, um, this is a sh very shiny grass. And so if you look out across your wheat fields, you're going to see see that um, very silvery shine on those leaves compared to the wheat which is very matte in color. Uh, it also has um, oracles which is a little flap of tissue that wraps right around the stem and we'll take a look, look at those really closely. And then for um, wild oat, it's going to look much more similar to wheat but it's going to have a wider blade and also will have those oracles so we'll take a look at, at that as well. Uh, this is wild oat and we're showing it here today in a greenhouse pot because it's less common in the area here but you may see it in other parts of the state where you are. Uh, notice the wheat, the leaf blades are much wider than what you would expect for wheat so that's a way you can identify it out in your field but the the color of the leaf and the kind of structure of the plant is very similar to wheat, so that makes it a challenge sometimes. This one has been in the greenhouse for a while, so it's already starting to produce a seed head. You won't see these in your field right at this moment, but this is what you'd be looking for in spring to notice that you have a problem. These are kind of drooping seed heads, so you'll notice them in the field um, when the wheat is standing up. On the stem, you'll notice that they have very swollen nodes and they often flex at the nodes, so this is a good indicator that you may have uh, wild oat out there in your field if you're seeing those characteristics. So now we're looking at some small specimens of downy brome. So you'll notice that they're much smaller than what our wheat stands are usually right now. Uh, these you might find in between the rows or even in the crop row in between your, your wheat plants. The characteristic that might be hard to see here is these are covered in um, small white hairs on the upper and lower surface. I have a much larger one um, here where we might be able to see some of those hairs because they're extremely hairy. They feel almost like velvet and when they get really large you'll be able to see those hairs really uh, nicely on there. This makes them more challenging to control because the herbicides that you spray out there often sits up on top of those hairs instead of being absorbed by the plant leaf. Let's also talk about the volunteer wheat that may be coming up where you may not want it. Right, so many times you will go out there with your variety of choice this year and lo and behold the wheat that fell into the, uh, the ground last year when you harvested has already come up and is starting to become a problem. Um, the challenge there is that it's bigger and it's going to be in between the rows and it can cause some issues. There's not a lot we can do about controlling that. Um, you can maybe manage it on the field edges, uh, but usually it's not a major issue unless you're a certified seed grower and you need to have a particular variety in that field. Speaking of control, what, what are some of the things that producers need to be thinking about whenever they do control those, those other weeds? So for our grassy weeds, we have a lot of group two herbicides available. The only time that's going to be a challenge is when we're talking about Italian ryegrass, which we do have resistance to that group of herbicides in Oklahoma. And for that resistant um, populations, then you need to be thinking about adding either a pre zidua which is a little late on the timing for that right now, or looking at an axial XL program um, to control that because it's a different mode of action. Now, it, it, when, when should producers be applying that? Because, you know, it just, just because it's December, January in Oklahoma it doesn't mean it's, you know, 20 degrees outside. Plants Certainly. are growing. Um, you want, for wheat, um, weed control in wheat, you want to have temperatures above freezing to make your applications. Obviously, you don't want your spray broom to freeze. Um, but now, through the next two to three weeks before we start getting really hard freezes is a very good time. After that, you really want to wait until probably mid-February or late February to make a spring application. All of the herbicides we're talking about today have opportunities for control in both fall and spring applications, but fall is by far going to give you the best control. Let's talk about that. What, what makes fall so, so, so much better than, say, a spring application? So right now we're very moist and we have nice warm temperatures during the day, so those weeds are really actively growing. 
The more actively growing your weeds are, the better they're able to take up that herbicide and the better control you're going to get. If you let those weeds sit all the way through the winter, they're going to harden off. So they're going to make thicker um, tissues. They're going to be kind of hunkered down for the winter. And when they come out of that season, then it's going to be much more challenging to control them. Okay, thank you much, Angela Post, weed scientist here at Oklahoma State University.